Yo, what is up, beautiful people on YouTube? It is Kenny Castellanos, and we're back at it with another uh, portrait painting. And I'm um, going to explain the process of this one in particular because I find it to be um, not least successful than the last video. But there's, I feel like there's a lot of interesting points that we're going to kind of go over and look at um, while I paint Boba Fett. Now, originally, this was going to be a um, kind of like a... Drew Struzan Star Wars painting where I was going to have the Mandalorian with Grogu and Boba Fett in the background and it was going to be like really cool but then I was like as I was working into it I was like I kind of don't know how to make this work because <laughs> I just couldn't find good uh, resource images to, to kind of string together um, which was kind of it, it kind of sucked but uh, as you can see right here right now I'm I'm lassoing Boba Fett to isolate him from the background and, and I'm gonna eventually do the same thing with Mando and uh and Grogu here but then I just I couldn't figure out a way to like I guess photo bash the images together to where it made sense and it looked cool and, and I, I really was trying to go for that Drew Struzan effect um where you just have like a lot of portraits and um and spaceships and it, it was gonna be like a cool so I was gonna put the Star Wars logo and put Mandalorian and, it just, yeah, it just looks weird to me. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make this a simple portrait. Yeah, you see me right here. I just, I was just like, let me just blow this up and just do a Boba Fett portrait. <laughs> um, so I, I, as you can see right there, I put a, a blue-gray-ish background. Um, and we begin the line drawing for Boba Fett. Uh, when I do these line drawings, I really just try to get the basic forms, um, the main primary shapes and, and some details. But you can see, like, um, when we get into doing the armor I really don't put um a lot of uh I don't I don't worry about drawing every single scratch or dink in his uh in his armor I, I mainly save that for painting mostly because it saves me time and I can just worry about it in the paint and because I'm I know the textures I'm gonna need in order to do that in the paint um you can see here draw I draw some of the the bigger ones but I don't draw like all the little tiny ones because it's just gonna be a waste of time um, here working on his jetpack doing the outlining for it um, what you'll see in this one that you won't see in the Santa Claus video that I made is that I had a really hard time painting this guy well when I was painting it mentally I, was, I, I felt like it was like I was really struggling <laughs> Um, in terms of like making it like look right because his gun's out of focus um, the camera lens is mostly sharpened on his on his helmet so to kind of create like all the effects that I wanted to do you'll see later I, I kind of I allow the painting to be loose now whether that was a good thing or a bad thing you guys can let me know in the comments below um, and you, you'll kind of see it develop more so here uh, what you saw me do is I lightened the background um, so I can have a better sense of contrast when I go to put down the color. Also, real quick about color, um, I modify the color um, and that's very easy to do. This is a trick that I learned from a video a very long time ago um, and, and that trick is that color doesn't matter. <laughs> and what I mean by that, and you can find a whole bunch of artists say this and this is a, a common truth. Is that uh, color um, is subjective meaning that color changes all the time it, it bends to different light waves and color will always lie to you uh, when you think something's red uh, maybe in shadow it's like a dark orange or when you think something's orange in shadow it's, a, it's actually closer to brown so as long as you have tone and your values are correct um, you can use whatever colors you want so if you saw in the photo in the photo reference um a lot of boba fett's armor was very desaturated meaning that he's in broad daylight the, the lighting is even um and you don't get a lot of saturation because a lot of the terrain around him is um i believe it's called occlusion shadow where a lot of light bounces off the ground and hits his armor which makes his armor desaturated because those colors are mixing um optically right so 
how our eyes see it, they, we see them as a darker green. But here, I wanted to paint his armor kind of how like we all envision it, which is like that really nice green, um, green and red armor. Um, just to kind of make the image look more lively, as you can saw there for like a split second, um, how desaturated it was. So I'm, 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 I'm boosting the saturation a little bit, um, trying to enhance the contrast a tiny bit while keeping the values in line. Um, right now you can see, so he, here's another thing that I feel like is a common mistake that I, a lot of people do. And I, and I kind of did it in this painting. I started doing detail work and this is something you do not want to do. Do you see how much paint surface I've covered up um, and halfway, we're halfway through the video and I've covered up almost not like probably, this is probably 60% of the painting covered, right? And I am just so obsessed with trying to get this helmet looking right that I kind of forget about everything else. And professionally speaking, like you don't want to do that. You want to cover the whole surface. Here I start, I, I realize that and I'm like, man, been working on this helmet for forever and it wasn't even working out in my head so i was like you know what i'll come back to the helmet let me work on the rest of the body get it all blocked then um and i could come back to the helmet whenever and that's really how you should work when you're working on portraiture or, or figure painting um because it keeps you it keeps you fresh at the same time you're not obsessed with how things look and and that's kind of how this painting from the beginning of it was was kind of all about like how can I make this look cool and I was obsessed and and, and going over the details and, and you don't want to do that you definitely don't want to do that and then I and here we go I started doing it again trying to get this blaster looking right because uh, it's, it's foreshortened um, it's in perspective and also it's abstracted because it's blurred from the camera in the in the original reference photo so in my head I'm thinking okay how can I make this thing that's super abstract look like the thing that it looks like and you really just have to stick to those those shapes those primary and secondary shapes that are making that object the thing and when you look at it from far away it looks like a blaster um sort of <laughs> i i was having a hard time with that um and I, and here i start putting in kind of like a daylight uh sunset in the background or not sunset sunrise kind of in the background like early morning um because I felt like it would it would help me see the colors in the gun a little bit better because I felt like it was just getting lost in the background. So I was trying to separate the background from the foreground. Um, I don't know why I stopped here. I think I was just looking at it because I was, I was trying to take in everything I had done and saying, okay, what do I need to work on? And sometimes taking a step back is really good. Um, you may waste a little bit of time, but it's time well spent because you're trying to... Um, you're trying to you're trying to take everything in and, and trying to see the bigger picture and go okay what can i do to make this better um and and that that was happening a lot in this piece um and i think really it all boiled down to is um focusing too much on detail and texture and really trying to achieve a a detailed piece and and that's not i don't feel like that's what this piece called for i think i pull it together in the end i think it, it gets to a place where I'm, I'm happy with it it was a nice little um study of armor and how things fit together on a person's body um and you at some point you kind of have to take what you learn from something even if you don't feel like it's the most successful work you've done and carry that to the next project and that's that's something i've learned doing painting for most of my life um that some things are just not going to work and you need to be okay with that and move forward and um and apply what you learn to the next painting and um definitely felt like that with the boat bet 100 percent um so here i started doing something crazy i start adding color that really shouldn't make sense i, I uh, so the background is kind of like a light white yellow white background and i kind of add this purple shadow and in my head, I'm thinking maybe he's up against a wall and maybe there's something casting a shadow on him, which is why his armor is darker. Um, it's kind of what I was thinking about. But uh, so here I'm blocking in more of his of his armor and his clothing and his, and then I eventually go into the jetpack. And this is the decision where I decided or this is where I made the decision rather to kind of keep everything kind of loose and very painterly. 
um, and, and trying to get away with as few strokes as possible while still trying to maintain that image in your head of what Boba Fett looks like. And I think I did okay. I could have done better, 100%. Um, um, and, and, I, and I think my, t my typical preference and my, my natural instinct is to, is to detail everything, is to put so much detail into making an image um, and not attempting to be loose. And here I really try to, okay, how can I make this as loose as possible while giving you as much information as possible um, to sell the image? Um, and that's something I was struggling with the whole, the whole painting, like I said. Um, what I end up trying to do now is, as I'm going to be rendering his arm with the gun facing us, it still felt weird, um, the way it looked. So I kind of add this, uh, this smearing effect that's going to blur the, the hand and the gun. That kind of makes it look like he's drawing, um, his weapon, um, and aiming it at the viewer. That's kind of what I end up going for. So here I add some more shadows in the hand. And now I'm going to try smearing it a little bit to kind of get that sense of motion. And this is kind of where I almost call it done. I think I add a little bit more to the jetpack. I think I fix his antenna because uh, I think it was missing some coloring and detail. I kind of, I, 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 looking at this, you know, now I, I'm really happy with how it came out. Again, I don't think it's the most successful painting I've ever done. But I think it's good for what it is, and it's gonna definitely. I learned a lot, and it's gonna. A lot of those things that I learned again are gonna carry into um, the next painting for sure. But uh, now we're, uh, I think we're wrapping up pretty soon here. Uh, if you guys like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and to ring the bell for notifications on future painting videos that I'll do. Um, if you want to see more character uh, studies like this, uh, why don't you guys let me know in the comment below? Alrighty, be safe out there, guys. Deuces.